study abundant people. This is so important because most people weren't always abundant. Their life was a series of failures. And if you truly study abundant people, they learned from their experiences, they learned from their mistakes. And as you begin to study the personality traits, the qualities, the characteristics, the things that they did in their life, the sacrifices they made that built their character, that built the qualities of success, that built a strong personality, you will learn that their life was their initiation, that they had several things to learn before they could step in to abundance. So then, if a book mysteriously shows up, read it, and read it until you become it. Don't rush through it. Think about the person that you're studying. Think about what they did. Think about how you can apply those same things to yourself and your life. And then the next most important thing is once you start having some of those ideas, take some action every day. If you're moving into a state of being and you're changing your thoughts and feelings, it's time to take a risk. And if you don't take any action, then you don't believe in your future, period. But what are you bringing into your future? What are you bringing to the meeting? What are you bringing to the appointment? What are you bringing to the emails? All right, what kind of energy are you bringing? Because if you're going there in a state of apathy or in a state of resistance, you're not bringing the energy into your future. So make moves in your life as if you are, are doing it from a place where you are already are your future. In other words, when you step into a future, think about if you were already that person, how would you act? And this is a great example. So many people are in such a state of lack, in such a state of separation, that they spend hours saying in their affirmations, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant. They're thinking the thought, but their body isn't in alignment with the thought. Their feeling isn't in alignment with their thoughts. So if your thinking is the vocabulary of the brain and your feeling is your vocabulary of your body and you're feeling separation, you're feeling frustration and you're thinking thoughts that I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, it makes sense then that thought is never going to pass your brainstem and begin to signal your body to move into a state of being. So if you're starting to make the decisions in your life as if you were already doing it from that future state of being, you would probably do it more calmly, more smoothly, without arrogance, without rushing, without pushing. You would kind of be in a different state because you already are that person and the choices that you're making and the things that you're doing have so much less to do with urgency and vigilance. It has much more to do with your state of being. So then you have to begin working your way by step by step into your future. And if you start taking action, means then it's not just that you do it and it comes to you and you can sit on your couch or you can sit in the bathtub or you don't have to get a job. That's the very extreme example of fanaticism. What I'm talking about is that you have to begin to meet your dream halfway. It means that you have to lean into it a little bit. That means then you got to bring your body into your future. You have to take your body into your future. So once you're in a state of being, once you're in that state and you start thinking about the actions you want to take, you have to begin to meet your dream halfway, which means you're going to start having to make some choices. And those choices are going to be as if you were already there. Try it out. I swear to you, when you step into the unknown, in the beginning, it'll feel uncomfortable but you will be in a very different place in your day than when you started out doing the same things and thinking the same way. At the end of the day, and I always do this, learn from your mistakes and self-correct. In other words, where did you fall from grace? Where did you begin to go unconscious again? What did you do that was acting like a person that was in lack instead of a different person? If your personality creates your personal reality, and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then it's time to know the old self really well. Write down every thought that you think 
that stands in the way between you and your future. And if you can't memorize them and you can't repeat them and you can't know them, then they're going to slip by your awareness. I swear to you, if you take the time and list them out, the moment that thought comes up, it's going to be like recognizing an old friend. You're just going to notice it and it's not going to make it past your analytical mind. Become aware of how you speak, what you say. Become aware of how you act. Whatever that action is, whatever you're doing, whether you're complaining or frustrated or angry or lashing out or judging, become aware of those actions. Those actions are not an abundant person. Look at the emotions also. If you're feeling lack, a wealthy person doesn't feel lack. A wealthy person feels pretty relaxed in the present moment and begin to become so conscious of that 95% of who you are to know yourself you are leaving that person behind and you are taking the skills the great habits the good attitude the positive actions and emotions into your future but you can't take everything that has to do with the old self which brings me to the next point it wouldn't be a bad idea to start writing down the thoughts that a wealthy person does think a healthy person in their management of money how they execute look at their actions look at the emotional states that they live by and spend a part of the day living as that person practice being it practice being it when you're standing and you don't have to do anything except move into a state of being practice being it when you're walking practice being it when you're sitting sitting at the dinner table sitting in your car sitting waiting for somebody practice it when you lie down imagine close your eyes and move into a state of being where you are that person and before you fall asleep program your subconscious into that state the subconscious loves fairy tales so you might as well tell a great fairy tale when you're laying down if you know your old self so well like a friend i swear to you you will be able to counsel it you will be able to counsel it from the new self so becoming very conscious of your unconscious states the more conscious you are of that the less you are the old self and the more you're crossing that river so if you just take the time to write down any thought any action or any emotion that keeps you connected to your old self and you can review them if someone said what was the old self that you used to live by and you could say i used to think i can i used to think money never was easy to come by i used to think that life was really hard the universe didn't really like me that i i wasn't worthy of receiving I complained a lot, I blamed everybody else for my life. If you have that kind of level of clarity, it means now you're no longer that person. You are the person on the other side crossing the river that's aware of that person and you will move further and further away from it. Now, the next point has to do with affluence. And affluence means that you've created enough influence with yourself and enough influence in your life that now you are worthy to receive the feedback from your efforts you can't wait for this to happen you can't pray for this to happen you can't wish for this to happen you can't hope for this to happen this is when you let go and you start to give and whatever you start to give you will receive and so when you begin to give as a abundant person I don't care if it's even just small things but you have to start the flow by giving and taking action as if you are already abundant. If you have enough influence on yourself and your life, then affluence always comes and it comes in the form of feedback. And if it's not happening, it's time to give. Give things away that you no longer need. I don't care what it is. Give somebody a bottle of wine, give them something your clothes that you no longer wear, clean a closet and give it away. just start giving things away to start the movement and the flow in your life now i just was having a conversation with someone earlier today and he was telling me that he was having difficulty in the creative process and i said well you have one of two choices you either create from duality or polarity and duality or polarity means i don't have what i want and because i don't have what i want i want to get what i don't have And what most people do is they try to create from a state of not having. And because when they look to see that it hasn't appeared in their life, 
then of course they feel more separate from the experience and they try harder. And so many people do this. But if you are creating from a state of abundance or a state of wholeness or a state of worthiness, and I like the word worthy because worthy means you are worthy to receive. You're no longer looking for anything. You're no longer separate from anything. You actually feel like you already have it. And when you get to the point where you feel like you already have it, and you're no longer looking for it, that's the moment the universe realizes that you're out of the way. You begin to draw things to you. And we call that in our work, fifth dimensional creation, or fifth dimensional reality. So creating from fifth dimensional reality means you don't have to drag your body to work. You don't have to drag your body somewhere to get some kind of goal realized. In fact, you start noticing things landing in your lap, and when it starts to land in your lap, that is affluence. That means then you're in vibrational match and the universe begins to show you signs, and that's when it starts to get exciting. Why? Because you start feeling the energy of your creation, and you start to believe in your creation more. The energy from the experience and the emotion that's created raises your vibration. You begin to feel better, and you start to use that energy to create again. And all of a sudden, you move from a state of victimization in your life, all of a sudden into a state of creation. And of course, that's when the magic starts to happen. But you can't do that until you start getting beyond yourself. The next thing is, and I find this so important, is to cue your environment. Put little things on your dashboard, put little notes on your mirror in your bathroom, put little pictures of vacations you went on or cars you want to drive, or I don't care what it is. Whatever your definition of abundance is art that you would love. Cue your environment with small little things to keep you reminded of where you're going so that in a moment or so while you're staring around or sitting around looking around your house in routine ways, all of a sudden that catches your attention and it breaks your routine and it changes your experience of the environment. If you begin to change your experience in your environment with small little things and cues, your environment is no longer unconsciously controlling how you think, act, and feel.